The holiday season's upon us. Eggnog, Yuletide greetings, the Star Wars holiday special. It's a time to get together and share old Christmas memories and newly discovered passions, like your brand new Oculus Quest. The Quest makes sharing VR super easy, and you're excited to show everyone why you think it's so great. But getting a headset on someone, it's tough. Getting them to keep it on, it's even more difficult. You only have one chance of getting them their first experience. You want to make it a good one. If you only had the perfect game or experience, you just know they'd love it. But everyone's different. A single game won't be enough. I've spent years trying to show VR to friends and family, and I've narrowed down my list of games, experiences, and know-how to give you the best chance at showing them why you love VR. You never know. You might find a little something here for yourself. So sit back, pour yourself a glass of Uncle Bob's Special Nog, let's get into my list of the best games and tips to show off your brand new Oculus Quest this Christmas. You filthy animals! A quick word before we get started here. I understand a video on tips for sharing a VR headset sounds a bit tone deaf during a quarantine. In this video, I share tips on how to clean the headset as well as ways to safely share the headset with someone else, a reality we should practice during and after the pandemic. So let's use our heads as well as our hands and play smart so we can continue playing together in person and virtually in the future. So with that, on with the video. So before you take off for your holiday gathering with VR headset in hand, let's make sure you have everything together to make things go as smooth as possible. First things first, charge your HMD. You want to make sure your headset is ready to go. You got to be ready when they are so you can strike while the iron's hot. Next, place fresh batteries in the controller. Sure, you can use the Quest without controllers, but few experiences support hand tracking only. Dead controllers mean a dead party. Next, have masks, alcohol wipes, and even hand sanitizer ready. Keep a baggie of alcohol wipes ready so you can clean the headset and controllers before each use. I like the Hyverkin VR sanitary masks. They sit between the headset and the player's face. When done, throw them out and grab a new one before the next person. Even before quarantine, it was always a good idea to keep your HMD clean between sessions. A clean headset is a happy headset. Next up, purchase a silicone or pleather face gasket cover. The factory provided face gasket on the Oculus Quest is essentially a sweat sponge. If there's any one part of the headset that carries any form of unwanted bacteria or other nasties, it's there. It's disgusting. Cleaning your headset between each use is important, especially if you're sharing with someone else. I used to purchase a vinyl face gasket cover from VR Cover, which made cleaning easy. But VR Cover now offers silicone covers in a variety of colors. I really like their products, and at the very least, purchase a face gasket cover for all of my headsets. Next up, bring an external battery to charge while playing. Nothing ruins the fun like running out of power mid-game. The Oculus lead strap with battery has a battery built right in, and you can purchase a third-party battery that attaches to the strap from VR Power. Both options not only give you extra battery life, but take some of the weight off the front, making the entire headset a lot more comfortable. And if you don't purchase either of these built-in options, you can use your own external battery, connecting the cable between the battery and the headset. Just slip the battery in a pocket, connect the cable, and you're good to go. Check ahead of time to make sure that you have the right cable for the job. The end that plugs into the Quest will be USB-C, and the other end depends on the battery, but it's probably USB-A. If your battery has USB-C output, then you can simply use the cable that comes with the Quest. Next, cast to a mobile device or Chromecast. A big part of the fun of sharing VR is watching someone discover it on their own terms, and as someone who already enjoys it, you already know what they're experiencing. But for everyone else, they just see someone swinging around their arms and grinning ear to ear. Take advantage of the moment use a mobile device or a Chromecast, making sure it works ahead of time and you're comfortable getting it connected. Next up, start each game at least once. Now sometimes there's a bit of setup and fiddly parts you want to get out of the way. Start each game or experience you intend to share before leaving for the gathering. Many people are reluctant as it is, and making them sit through a tutorial or first time load screens can try their patience. 
Get that all out of the way ahead of time so you can get them in and going when they're ready. Next, familiarize yourself with all of your games and experiences. Even when casting, it can be difficult to understand exactly what someone is seeing in order to tell them exactly what options to choose or what button to push. You should try all these before you introduce them to a new user. Better yet, with the Oculus app installed ahead of time, you can not only see exactly what they're seeing, but you can launch the game straight from your mobile device. That way you don't have to direct them to the right menu scrolling through thumbnails until they find the right app. Plus, watching them from your mobile device makes the entire process so much easier and a better experience for them. I'll place a link in the description for all of the items mentioned in this video. Using the links to purchase items helps keep this channel going, and I always appreciate that. I found showing off VR often comes down to getting the person into the right gamer experience. People have a preconceived notion of VR, and for some, we want to meet that idea. But many believe it's only about shooting or stabbing the bad guys. Over the years, I've discovered some games and experiences that show off VR really well without getting someone overwhelmed or worse sick. I found the best experiences for first-time users all have these things in common. They're easy to understand. They have intuitive controls. They have satisfying gameplay, and most importantly, they're just fun. The following is a list of games that I strongly feel represent my requirements and will leave a positive impression on the player. For the VR veteran, all of my recommendations are likely old favorites of yours, but for those new to VR, these aren't just a list of experiences that will sell the system, but each is great in its own right. Make sure to enjoy each for yourself, as above all, they're great examples of why we decided to buy a VR headset in the first place. First up, Beat Saber, a perennial favorite. Beat Saber is a delightful mix of fantastic visuals and easy to understand gameplay. Perhaps better yet, anyone watching on another screen quickly picks up on the rules and cannot wait for their turn. Beat Saber, although a predictable pick, is a system seller, especially as it has broad appeal and in my opinion, should be the first game you show. For anyone who says they've already played Beat Saber, you can alternately show them Pistol Whip, as it's similar in that you score by keeping the beat. Its visual style and gameplay are quite different and sure to please. Back to back, the combo of Beat Saber and my next pick, Super Hot, are sure to get anyone who isn't already sold. Like Beat Saber, it's one of the first VR games in the modern VR era to really drive home the capabilities of VR, while delivering satisfying gameplay and beautiful visuals. Super Hot's gimmick, where time only moves when you move, really illustrates how VR is different from two-dimensional gameplay. Plus, seeing Grandma crotch punch a six-foot crystalline enemy is sure to leave a deep-seated holiday scar for us all to enjoy for years to come. Racket NX first appeared in Alpha on SteamVR back in 2017, and straight out the gate it was a ton of fun. Sometimes we judge games by their real-world inspiration, and I made that mistake the first time I saw Racket NX. At first glance, Racket NX looks to simply be Racket Ball in Space! And it is, but somehow it works really well. Like many, I think gameplay matters more than visuals, but visuals are still important and Racket NX manages to not only deliver on gameplay in spades, but provides a gorgeous arena of delightful eye candy. With the recent addition of cooperative gameplay, Racket NX delivers another opportunity to socialize with friends and meet new players. Like Beat Saber, Racket NX really drives home the ability to exercise in VR, which is sure to get the attention of those who have a lot of interest in working out, especially during the winter and the quarantine. Although it sounds like work, Job Simulator is a comical take on how we interact with our environment and others. This game is perfect for someone who considers himself a casual gamer. Job Simulator is also great for kids, since its interface may be adjusted to their height. It's completely safe for work, and it has no online component, so there's no concern of running into an adult player. Don't let the title mislead you. This game is a ton of fun. My next pick is often overlooked as it's a tutorial, and I think most of us rush through it to get to the games. But for someone new to VR, it's perfect since it has fantastic visuals, teaches VR basics, and manages to surprise and delight along the way. And that pick is First Steps. I've not shown off First Steps to a single person who hasn't grabbed that robot's hands and begun dancing around the room with that gigantic grin on their face. That grin is the very reason you're showing them VR. So to discount First Steps is a mistake. For many people, it's perhaps the right thing to show them, as although experiences like Beat Saber and Super Hot are fun and engaging, they may feel a little too aggressive for someone who's interested in VR, but associates VR with video games and virtual destruction. 
And with that in mind, my last pick is sure to satisfy anyone who thinks it's only about the games, and that is Wolves in the Walls. I cannot say enough good things about Wolves in the Walls. Based on the 2003 book by Neil Gaiman, Wolves in the Walls places you at the side of a girl who is certain there are wolves in the walls of her family home, regardless of what her family says, and she needs your help in finding proof before it's too late. This is not a game, but an interactive story. Its creators have done an amazing job of using VR to introduce you to the characters and reveal new elements as the story progresses. It's an amazing example of what VR has to offer over the traditional passive two-dimensional viewing experience that will 100% leave an impression. Truly, if this were the only thing I ever experienced in VR, then I would be left with an amazing impression of its potential. I was floored by it. And for this reason alone, it might be the right pick for that person who insists VR is all about games and not something they'd enjoy. For that matter, everyone will like Wolves in the Walls, and it's a great follow-up to anyone asking for more after their first experience. So the holidays are indeed a special time. The perfect opportunity to share virtual reality. With these recommendations, you are sure to introduce VR to a whole new group of people the right way. Just remember to take the proper precautions to clean the headset and the controllers before you share it with those you love. So from me, Greg, the king of nerds, and to you and yours, have a very happy and safe holiday. Oh, and please like, comment, and subscribe. It would make my Christmas the best ever. Now to watch Christmas Vacation on the big screen. <laughs> but looking forward to this all season. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Chevy Chase, you are the best ever. You are a national treasure. <laughs> oh.